Welcome to this session. Um, my name is Shao Feng Shi. Uh, I'm from China, Shanghai. Uh, today, uh, the topic is how to accelerate big data analytics on Hadoop with Apache Kali. This is, my, uh, this is about me. Uh, I'm Apache Kali committer and PMS member since uh, 2014, when I was uh, working for eBay in Shanghai. Uh, now I'm the chief architect in Kiligence. This is today's agenda. Firstly, I'd like to introduce the background of this project, what's the problem we are facing, and what's the solution we proposed. Nextly, I will introduce how AppliCaling build, store, and query the OLAP cubes on Hadoop. I will also give a simple uh, performance benchmark. In the final part, I will introduce several use cases. The background is uh, pretty simple, because today, more and more data are collected by the companies. And uh, when we produce uh, processing the big data, Hadoop is one of the uh, best choice well, if you're looking at the uh, technical components in Hadoop, you will find that most of them are developed for batch processing. They were not designed for the low latency SQL queries. That means when the data, data size keep increase, you will spend more and more time in running the SQL queries. That will cause a worse and worse user experience for your data analysis. So the challenge we're facing is how to keep the high performance as the data grows. To be uh, precise, the high performance means the query latency should be at second to sub-second level, which is uh, very comfortable for a human being. We investigated the solutions uh, in the domain. There are mainly two techni uh, technologies. One is the massive parallel processing solution. The other is a SQL on Hadoop solution. The sample includes Amazon Redshift, Pivotal Green Plum, and also the Presto in Plum, and the Spark SQL. Well, uh, when we run in the Benchmarks on big data, we find that uh, these MPP solutions couldn't work well. Because these solutions, they are trying to accelerate the queries with the following uh, methodologies. One is the shared nothing uh, architecture. They will distribute the data into multi nodes by certain keys. And then when you query the data, Oh, sorry. The office on Mac is very unstable. <laughs> They will distribute the data by certain rules to multi nodes and then um, translate the SQL query to parallel processing, so to uh, reduce the total uh, latency. Another optimization is to convert the data into columnar format with some uh, typed compression. And also, they will, in order to improve the performance, they will uh, catch the data in memory as much as possible. The total architecture, uh, if you look at that, there are many, um, many uh, bottlenecks, such as the uh, memory, the CPU, and the network I.O. So the MPP solution, they will have the following limitations. 
the first is the performance couldn't be uh, very low latency. Usually, the latency is from tens of seconds to even tens of minutes. Secondly, it couldn't uh, serve multiple concurrent users because one query may exhaust all the resources in the cluster. The third problem is uh, about the scalability. Each time when you add a node to your Redshift red cluster, you will find it will need to redistribute all the data. It will take uh, several hours to finish. And when you add more and more nodes to this cluster, the master node will become a bottleneck. This limits the cluster to expand to a larger size. So we think, what a OLAP solution for big data? Firstly, it should be high performance, and it can serve multiple concurrent users with a good scalability, so that you don't need to always move your data. And it needed to be standard, standard compliant with, so that you can integrate it with other systems. And finally, the OLAP solution needs to be ease of use. So we propose that our solution is to uh, develop a new OLAP engine on top of Hadoop. We call it as Apache Kelly. This project was or originated in eBay. The, this diagram shows the position of Apache Kelly. It is running on top of Hadoop and connecting, connecting with your uh, BI tools, your dashboard, your reporting. The core concept in Apache Kelly is using the OLAP cube technology. It can support a very large data scale from PB to, uh, TB to PB, while the overall latency can be controlled at the sub-second level. The query language is unsysical, so that the user doesn't need to learn another language. We will provide the JDBC, ODBC, and the REST API for you to integrate it with other tools. It will have a better uh, BI inter integration for example, connecting from Tableau, from Cognos, from MicroStrategy, and other tools. It will provide a user-friendly web GUI for the analytics to self-serving. And you, you can integrate it with your user authentication system via LDAP and single sign-on. When we're talking about the OLAP cube, um, cube is a data structure optimized for the multi, multiple di dimensional data access. Its performance can be very, very fast. This technology has been widely ado adopted by the data warehouse products in the past years. Well, if you look at uh, the big data domain, there is no uh, tool to, to build the OLAP cube. So we, are, we were thinking, can we try to uh, move the cube concept on into the big data domain? If we can build the cube and query the cube for big data, what's the benefit? Firstly, we will get the uh, benefit on the performance because uh, you don't need to scan your raw data. The cube is aggregated and indexed, so it can be 1,000 faster than reading from raw data. And it will be cost effective. For example, <coughs> once the cube be built, the queries after that will be very fast. So uh, you just need to run one comprehensive build and uh, gain uh, the performance improvement in the next. And the cubes, they are very easy to, un to understand, to create, to update by your analytics. That means the data engineers doesn't need to involve in this. 
you you might consent uh, is it possible to build the cube for such a huge data set? You don't need to uh, worry about that be because Hadoop is enough matured today. We can use it to do this process. This is the overall uh, data flow in Apache Killing. We separate the data flow into two parts. One part is the offline data flow. The other is the online data flow, marked in the blue and the green. The offline data flow, it is a cube building process. After killing, will generate the job steps to extract the source data from Hive, Kafka, or other system, extract them to the Hadoop, and then run the MapReduce or Spark jobs against them, and convert to HBase format and load into HBase. Once the cube be built, you will be able to query them with the ANSI SQL. You can connect from the, uh, your BI tools or dashboard to a killing. Killing will translate, will pass the SQL and translate it to cube visiting. It will no longer need to touch your source data. So the online data flow will be much faster. Someone may mention that uh, is cube the same concept as the materialized view? Uh, they are similar, but they are, they are different. In one cube, by default, it will have many cube balls. An uh, n-dimension cube will have two n-power uh, cube balls. Each cube board is actually a materialized view. And this is a sample of a four-dimension uh, cube. This is a, a cube board of the four dimension, and there will be four three-dimension cube, cube board, and uh, six two-dimension cube board, and four one-dimension cube board. All these cube board will be built in one job. So all of the data in all of them are consistent. When you browse your data, draw up or drill down, Killing will pick up the best matched cue board to answer your question. So even if you draw up to a very high level data, the performance can be satisfied. This page shows how Killing builds the cube. We divide the cube building into several steps. And each step is a, maybe a Hive job, a MapReduce job, or a HBase job. Killing will execute them one by one and automatically. So you don't need to write any code. The first step usually is to extract the source data to Hadoop. And then Killing will extract the dimension values for them to build the dimension, uh, dimension dictionaries. Then it will start several round jobs to build the cubes gradually. By default, we will use a bilayer cubing process. It will firstly build the base cube board, which, which contains all the dimensions. And then based on it, we will aggregate to get the n minus one cube balls, and uh, repeat this until all the cube balls be calculated. Finally, we will convert the cube to the HBase format and uh, load into HBase. How killing persists the cube in HBase? Um, we know that a cube is, cons uh, is composed by many cube balls. And each cube board has their dimensions and measures. And the query usually is to scan a certain cube board with some uh, dimensions. So we will combine the cube board ID together with the dimension values as the HBase raw key. And put the measures, also called matrix, to HBase column values.
how we query the OLAP cubes in killing uh, to make the system easy to use. We use SQL as the query language. Killing integrates Apache CalSet as the SQL parser and optimizer. Let's see an example. This is a typical OLAP query. It selects two dimensions and two metrics from two tables. There will be a filter condition, and finally, it needs a sorting. This query will be firstly be passed into such an execution plan, and will be executed from bottom to up. Well, looking at this plan, the table join and the aggregation usually is the most time-consuming part, which means if you execute in this plan, the time complexity is at least O n. Well, how Killing do it? Killing will pre-calculate the data, pre-aggregate the data into cubes. That means the table join and the aggregation has already been finished in the cube building phase. Then for this plan, we can rewrite it to start from this cube and do some filter and then minus sorting. As we know, the cube is already aggregated and indexed. So the cube visiting will be in a consistent time complexity, which is almost the O1. We did a performance benchmark to compare Killing with Hive with the star schema benchmark. This diagram shows how, uh, how much be improved when changed to update Killing. We can see for each query, at least it will be improved 200 times. And the most speed, um, biggest speed up is more than 1,000 times. This, this is unfair because most of the com uh, computation has already been finished in Killing, but the user experience is very different. Another diagram shows as the data increases, Killing's uh, latency is very stable. While for Apache Hive, it will increase as your data increases. Killing also have many advanced features. For example, when you have many dimensions, you can define a partial cube with some rules or with some algorithm we call the cube planner. It also supports very high cardinality dimension, such as a user ID, a cell phone number, etc. And it supports precisely count distinct measure on UHC column. It also supports incremental data load so that you don't need to refresh history data when you load uh, new data. It also supports use Kafka and uh, RDBMS as a data source. In the production environment, you can scale it to a multi-node cluster. And even you can separate the cube building and the cube query into different Hadoop cluster. We call it read-write separation deployment. Currently, uh, the Killing V3.0 is on the way. The main feature is the real-time OLAP. This is a summary of the best scenarios for Apache Killing. The first scenario is a dashboard reporting and the business intelligent migrated from the legacy database or MPP solutions. The second scenario is a multi-dimensional data exploration. You can let your data analytics to self-serve to find the values in the data. The third scenario is to offload the traditional data warehouse onto Hadoop. Killing can help you to 
accelerate these queries. And also many users use Killing for the user behavior analysis, such as to compute the PV, UV, do the uh, funeral analysis, retention analysis, etc. And also it can be used for the transparent query acceleration. The user doesn't need to aware the underlying engines. They just send the unsuccessful queries. OK, uh, nextly, let's look at uh, uh, several use cases. This is one of the biggest uh, upticlean deployment in the world. It is in the Meituan and the Dianping. Meituan Dianping is the biggest uh, online to offline service provider in China. Their main business is uh, uh, takeaway, rating, hotel, travel, and also mobile mobile uh, the shared bike in Orange is also a business line in Meituan. In Berlin, I see there are a lot of uh, mobile on the street. Meituan has more than 300, 300 million active users and uh, more than 3 million merchants. So you can imagine how much transaction data and the user behavior data be collected. And they, in four years ago, they decided to build a central lab platform for, this, uh, for the whole co company. They did some investigation and selected Apt Killing to do this, to serve thousands of their business analysts and their external partners. Till last year, there are more than 1,000 cubes in uh, Apt Killing, and the total data fed into Killing is more than 8 trillion rows. The cube storage is near uh, close to 1 PB. Every day they will have more than 3 million SQL queries, and most of these queries are triggered by the analysts. Well, on such a huge data set and with so many queries, most of the queries can be answered in around one second. The second use case is from Yahoo Japan. Uh, Yahoo Japan is an, on, uh, the, one of the biggest uh, portal in, uh, in Japan. It provides the email services, news services, and also online shopping. They used to use uh, Apache Impala as the analytics engine for, uh, for data analysis. Well, its performance couldn't uh, uh, fulfill as the data grows, so they migrated it f from Impala to Killing. After this, most of the queries were reduced from one minute to one second. And also, uh, as I mentioned, uh, Killing can be deployed into two Hadoop clusters. So they deploy the Killing's uh, job server in DC1 and the deploy the killing query server in DC2. DC1 is a shared Hadoop cluster in America. And the DC2 is in Japan, which is closed to their an analysis. After killing builds the raw data into cube, killing can automatically push the cube into the query cluster. Usually the cube can be much smaller than the original raw data. So use this, they can save a lot of bandwidth. You can read more uh, on this tech blog. The third use case is from Telecoming. Telecoming is a mobile payments company in Spain. They used to use uh, MySQL and the Vertica to do the data analytics. Well, as the data grow and grow, they are thinking the new solutions. And finally, they deployed Hadoop and Killing to support their interactive queries. And this solution has gained a very good result.
The first use case is from OLX group. Uh, yesterday evening, I have dinner with them and know the whole storage in OLX. OLX is a global online marketplace. Um, their data team is in Berlin, but their business is in uh, more than 40 countries. They used to use Apache, uh, Amazon Redshift as a data warehouse. Well, as the data grows, Redshift couldn't scale, so they decided to migrate the, the data to S3 and then build the analytics over above S3. And they tried a couple of solutions, including the Redshift Spectrum and the Apache Druid and the others. And finally, uh, they found only killing can match their requirement. One major reason is that their business analysts are using Tableau as the tool. Well, other, other engines, they couldn't match the requirement, the performance requirement, or they couldn't match the BI integra integration requirement. They said the killing is a game changer with its extreme faster performance and the seamless integration with Tableau. Yeah, here are some useful links you can uh, browse to learn more about uh, Apache Killing. And uh, we have the meetups will be held in China, in uh, US, and uh, sometimes in the uh, Euro, mainly in Spain or in England. And uh, in the future, we also uh, wish we can have the meetup in Berlin. If you need the enterprise solution, you can contact the agents. And the last, uh, I have one demo. Uh, I, I believe the live demo will uh, give a more comprehensive understanding about this tool. This demo is made by my colleague. The demo is trying to show uh, the user experience difference between uh, before using Apache Killing and after using Apache Killing. Okay. It's uh, here uh, we will firstly use Hive as the engine on a ten million data set. You can see that uh, when you click a button. The page is just uh, refreshing, refreshing, refreshing. The experience is very bad. Nextly, we build the cube for the data set. Then when you make any selection on the, uh, on the web GUI or on the Power BI tools, it will refresh the page in the real time. It, it also can be uh, used as a backend engine for Tableau. 
Here we have a data set with uh, several billion rows. Let's see how it acts in Tableau. When you drag some uh, filter or dimensions and make some selections, the report or the diagram will refresh very quickly. You can also define some uh, segment uh, level on your data. For example, you can define some uh, computed column and then use it in your report. Okay, this is all the presentation and the, the demo. So, anyone has any question? Okay, let's thank Xiaofeng for his talk. Thank you. Now we have time for questions. Want to fight or? Okay. I have a question about the persistence layer. I saw there's a plan to replace edge base with parquet or something else. Is, is this going to be somehow like next release or? Sorry? Uh, yeah. I saw there's, uh, I have a question about the persistence layer. So persistence now, layer. now it persists to edge base. And yeah. I saw there's a plan to replace edge base with parquet or something else. Is yeah. it going to be a next release or? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a good question. Uh, currently in Apache Killing, the cube is stored in edge base. And in the meanwhile, we are developing the packet storage. Yeah, and uh, it has been in a staged status. And uh, the, the released data hasn't been determined because uh, the performance is still needed to optimize. Maybe it's an, another major release. Yeah. Currently, only edge phase. Well, in, in the commercial version, we have replaced the edge base with a columnar file format. Thank you. Yeah. Um, is there any? Do you have any technology for identifying correlated dimensions? Like each dimension is expensive. Is there? Is there any way to analyze the data to say you don't need some dimension or um, just ways of reducing the dimensionality of the cube based on the data? OK, let me confirm. Are you asking that uh, uh, does Killing provide any way to optimize the dimensions? Yeah. Right, yeah. Um, actually, Killing have a, a set of rules to optimize this. I didn't list them on today's presentation because that is a little technical. Let me give you some example. Firstly, in Killing, you can divide the dimensions into several groups. Yeah, this is avoid, uh, avoid that uh, the mutual combinations in too many dimensions. And uh, in each group, you can define some rules. For example, hierarchy rules, uh, a na a nation, country, uh, na uh, country, nation, uh, city, uh, region, etc. Uh, and also, you can define some joint rules. For example, an ID and a name, they will always appear together or, uh, or some, something else. And also, you can uh, define this, uh, some mandatory rules. For example, in your dashboard or in your report, some conditions are required. So when you define uh, the cube, you can set uh, these, these dimensions as mandatory so that Killing doesn't uh, calculate those combinations that uh, has no that dimension. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we, we provide many rules for you to optimize the cube. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. 
Any other question? Yes. Uh, so I'm wondering, uh, so now it's going well with Tableau, um, and basically we test with uh, Power BI, the Microsoft solution, and it only supports the, the REC uh, import or something, so we have to dump all the, the data to, mm. to local, mm. and is there any other use case, like any other visualizations are supported, and any other visualization tools are supported except for Tableau, or? Um, currently, Tableau is the uh, most uh, popular used uh, BI tools for application. And uh, for Power BI, you just uh, mentioned uh, Power BI needed to extract the data to its server and uh, to run this. But recently, Power BI released uh, a plugin called uh, Direct Query. Direct Query means that it uh, can push down any queries to the underlying engine. Power BI doesn't need to cache the data. So we developed a, uh, implement a driver for Power BI direct query. So the, the video that I just showed is using that uh, driver, direct query driver, yeah. And uh, only with this you can uh, do the analytics on the big data set. For uh, the Tableau users, we also ask the user to use the direct connect mode. Uh, only uh, then let uh, Tableau to generate the SQL queries and send it to application. Otherwise, Tableau will send a selected star <laughs> query to try to cache all the data, then it will crash. Do we have any other question? Okay, then I would ask a question because we still have time. Um, so while we add more columns to our data set, the storage space that's needed somehow rises exponentially, right? Because we have all these combination of the dimensions. Um, so right now you just store all of them in H space, right? Um, do you plan to do some, like following up on uh, the question before, do you plan to do some compression or something in, along that lines to minimize the storage space or do you, still, do you plan to save everything like always? Um, <coughs> firstly, uh, we know that uh, for a cube, if the dimension, if it has many dimensions, the combination will be Many, many, too many, and uh, among of them, many of them are useless. So we don't need to calculate so many uh, combinations. So in Kling 2.3, we developed a component called Cube Planner. It can pass your query history and to collect the most, uh, most frequently visited cubes and then optimize the cube. So the cube will be much uh, smaller than before, but uh, its performance can be kept uh, at the same level. Yeah. In the future, we will um, keep optimize this in this way to make the cube more acceptable for the users. Okay, then if there is no other question, we can thank Xiaofeng again for his talk. Yeah, thank you.